<laughs> yeah, so it's it has the reputation of being really difficult to learn and exacting and of kind of losing the touch of the maker a little bit in this process. So um, the point of this demo is to show you that it's none of those things. Uh, it doesn't take any special expertise uh, or preparation or tools and you can have a lot of creativity still using a slipcast mold. Um, so you see here some of the versions or some of the products that, that will come out of this. Um, what I have here is a series of two part molds that I made. So each one I threw a little uh, a model, so I threw the positive that went in this hole out of clay, let it dry to just before leather hard, coated it with wax, poured the plaster, made my mold. And so now I have a two part mold, um, which is a simple plaster process to, to make. You don't have to make like a six part mold. Um, so this is simple. And then I just repeated that process with a couple different models that I threw. And so what I end up with is three separate pieces that um, when I made my models I measured so that the, the uh, circumferences of the ends will match up. So now I have kind of this stacking option where that diameter is the same as the inside of the bigger one which is the same as this one on the top. And so you could get a mug that matches up like this what looks like a you know, six part mold but it's really a series of two part molds, so it's much easier to make. And so, once you have your plaster molds, you set it on a base, just a plain flat base. You, of course, could make this more complicated and have like a nice foot on your, on your base. Um, but as it is, we'll just go with that. And then I use old bike tubes that I cut up as my rubber bands, and they're really easy to uh, to hold your mold together. And so I'll just attach these here. And this is my orientation. You know, I can have it so they match up like this. I can uh, make the exact opposite. So you see. Um, and just you, you have a lot of creativity with this. It's not, you're not getting the same product every time you really have room to play and if you have uh, another set maybe a fourth or fifth um, two-part mold to add into the mix you could really increase the the different options that you have dramatically and as for the slip that I'm going to pour in here you could look up a really precise recipe so you know exactly the ratio of clay and water to your deflocculant or you could just put a little silicium silicate in your trimming bucket <laughs> and mix it up like I did and have no idea what it's going to do. Um, but basically just mix until you want to start dry and you only need a little bit of deflocculant. So I used maybe a couple teaspoons for a five gallon bucket of trimming and then added just small amounts of water until I got it to the consistency that I want, and you'll see that in a minute. Um, so now my mold's all stacked the way I want it. I'm gonna, I sifted, or I um, used a talisman to mix my slip yesterday, so it's, there's no lumps in it. And so now I'm just gonna pour it in. And you'll see the consistency, it's pretty thick. Of course, the thicker it is, the faster it's gonna uh, cast. The thinner it is, the longer it will cast. Uh, but that might give you more control over the thickness. So I'm just going to fill it until you see this tiny meniscus where the, where the slip is bubbled up slightly above the surface of the mold. And that's nice because that gives you some room to clean up the lip when you're done. <coughs> and that's it. Now we just sit and wait maybe 20 minutes, maybe half an hour until the plaster is um, absorbed the water from the surface of the clay that's touching the plaster. And then I can flip it upside down, dump out the, the remaining liquid, and I'll be left with this shell that's touching the plaster on all surfaces. And then I'll let that sit a couple of hours until it's uh, firm enough that I can remove the plaster without damaging the, the, the cast. And, uh, and that's what I just did today. This is, this is the model that came out today. Um, 
And so you can see you can offset the different pieces, you have room to play and be creative with it, and then after the fact you can still do attachments. Um, and the only thing to remember with attachments, since I pulled this handle, I like to pull my handles, um, so it's not deflocculated clay. So it's going to have a little bit more moisture in it than the cast clay. The, ca or the cast clay will feel more liquid than, than it actually is. So um, when I attach my handle, I made sure that my handle is slightly more dry than, than the cast part. Do you, have, do you have a question? When you're ready. OK. Um, well, yeah, I think that's it. Um, so just, you know, you don't have to be an expert. I'm certainly not. And, uh, <laughs> It's just a nice process to, to play with it. All right, thank you.